So a fairly common question is, can you self-film out of a saddle? Can you film others in a saddle? The first part of that question, if you're going to film other people as just a solo cameraman and you got somebody else in the tree, it's a no-brainer. I don't see why more cameramen aren't using saddles. It just seems like there's so many advantages when using kind of a minimalist saddle like this when you're filming somebody else. That being said, for self-filming, it can certainly be done. It just There's a, a right way to do it. Uh, so I'll kind of go over my equipment and my process that helps me easily self-film when using a saddle. First off, starting with the equipment, I have a camera arm for my main camera. I have a secondary angle attached to my utility strap, which is over top of my head, and that camera's facing down, it's a wide angle. I have a Sony AS100V, but really anything that's wide angle like that, an action camera would work. For my main camera, I have a, kind of a modified fourth arrow camera arm base and shoulder, and then I have a DIY camera arm. Now, there's one thing that's kind of important about this camera arm, in my opinion, and that is that the top arm segment is a couple inches shorter than this first arm segment, and there's a reason for that. Because when you're in a saddle, one movement that you make with the camera arm that you really don't ever make when using a regular tree stand, at least not that often, is passing the camera from one side of the tree to the other. And when you do that, what I've found is that when the camera arm has both arm segments exactly the same length, especially if you've got a longer camera or you have a big shotgun mic, what can tend to happen is when you pass that camera beyond the tree, that mic or the camera can actually hit the bark and you have to kind of turn the camera sideways as you're passing it through. So having this top arm just a few inches shorter makes it really easy to maneuver the camera arm around the tree. I personally like two arm segments as opposed to three. I find that it's really easy to control that way. The camera, you can use whatever camera you want. I'm running right now a Sony AX53 with a Rode VideoMic Pro shotgun mic and a Fotka remote that plugs into the camera. That's how I run the on off, the zoom, and the record for that camera. Now I do have one third camera and that is just the Tacticam that I have on the front of the bow. So three total angles, the main one is here. I use this one a lot for B-roll and then the Tacticam is just kind of thrown in there for a third angle or if I just can't happen to get the main camera in for a shot, I can save it somewhat with the Tacticam. Now, for placing this camera arm, when in a sitting position in the saddle, I like to have the camera arm positioned vertically so that I can just pass it over top of my thighs as I'm in that sitting position. If you have the camera arm set too low, it can interfere with your thighs. When you're in the sitting position, if you have the camera arm too high, it can interfere with your bridge or your tether. I can use this camera arm when I'm standing and it's about the lowest that I'd be able to reach. I can still see that LCD screen easily at this height. And when I'm sitting down too, I can still see that LCD screen from here. And in terms of where to position the camera arm around the tree, if I'm on a small tree like this, basically what I like to do is, if you have your strong side shot, so for me, the strong side is this area of the tree, where if I have a deer on that side, I can take my bow, draw back and shoot with minimal movement. I like to be able to wrap the camera around the tree just enough to be able to film to that strong side and basically have the camera arm wrap as close to the tree as it can because that gives me the most amount of clearance. So on a small tree like this, I'll end up pushing that arm, that shoulder, further around away from the tree. If I was on a really small tree like a, a five or six inch diameter tree, I might even have that base all the way on the other side of the tree because I find that that gives me the best amount of clearance and I can still cover pretty much every direction, 360 degrees of that. On a larger tree, what I end up having to do is keep that camera arm mounted a little bit closer to my thighs. I don't want it directly in front of me because then of course my knee would interfere when I'm resting against the tree. So I like to have it just offset. But with a larger tree like this, it makes it tougher to really wrap that camera arm around to get the most amount of view. So I end up having to keep that thing close. Now, like I said before, with the strong side shot, a lot of times I'll just be sitting in the tree and I'll have my setup just like this. So again, it's minimal movement. 
I can turn the camera arm, start recording, and I'm ready to go. And for that whole strong side, I can basically have that camera follow where it needs to go. And even around on the back side, I can even point it, get to this side of the tree, draw back and shoot. So you might have to just kind of play around with where exactly that spot needs to be for what size tree you're on. Once you put it on enough trees, you'll kind of figure out where it needs to be the first try. For the weak side shot, this is why I personally like a platform when self-filming with a saddle because when you're using steps, whether it's a ring of steps or uh, wild edge steps, one of the easy ways to shoot an offhand or a weak side shot is to basically imagine I have a ring of steps going around the tree is to basically take a couple back drop steps to be able to shoot to that side. Well, if you do that with a camera arm, and I found this out the hard way last year, was that of course, when you do that little drop step, the camera is basically in the way. Uh, you get some interference here. So if you have a deer on this side, it's like, what do you do? Uh, do you try and move the camera like this? And then all of a sudden the camera's behind you, you can't reach. It makes it a little bit tougher in my opinion. So one of the advantages with the platform is that I'm able to take this camera arm and when I move it to my weak side, I like to just move the bow over the bridge, pull myself up literally so I'm standing on the platform. And then of course this platform isn't very big it doesn't give me a lot of room to stand on, but it gives me just enough to really be able to just stand up against the tree like this. And then I have this camera arm and a little bit easier reach where I can go ahead and I can make a shot to that side. And you might have to do some switching with the hands. You can, I guess, reach over the bow, but I usually find it easier just to kind of switch hands when I'm making that camera move. And I go ahead and take a shot pretty much anywhere on this weak side. So that's the big advantage with self-filming uh, with a platform as opposed to a ring of steps. And of course everything is easier with a compound versus a trad bow. This thing is, whenever you got a 60 inch bow plus in the tree, it just makes everything a little bit harder. So if I can do these movements with that bow, rest assured it's a lot easier to actually do them with a compound. I did notice one thing while I was editing this video and I wanted to kind of touch on it a little bit more. I'm really used to passing that bow over top of the bridge because for years when I used that assassin harness, that tether was really low like I have it shown right here in the video. So really going over the bridge and tether was the only option you really had. Uh, but another option that you have when using a more standard tether height with the saddle, which is gonna be you know, between chin and top of your head level for most people, is that you can actually pass that bow underneath the bridge like I'm doing here. Then you can still kind of grab that carabiner, or pull yourself up so you're standing up on top of the platform and then that tether is basically being held over the top of your shoulder like that. So you can see just like with the other scenario, I'm still able to kind of shoot to my weak hand side while standing on that platform. Depending on exactly how tight you have your tether and how high that tether is on the tree, you can even kind of shoot to almost directly behind you from this kind of a, a position. And since that tether is kind of in front of your shoulder, you can actually lean against it a little bit. So it provides a load of extra support. Uh, so some people might like that. Really what you have to kind of do is just kind of play around with both. Try passing the bow under your tether, try passing it over the tether and just see what makes most sense for your tether height and your comfort. Because ultimately what is most comfortable for you to do in a hunting scenario is the right way to do it. And typically, you know, guys will say, well, a weak side shot is a lot of movement in the saddle. And it is if you get caught off guard, but a lot of times you might be able to hear that deer coming. You can kind of prepare yourself just like you would with a tree stand. You hear that deer coming before you see it, you stand up, you turn on the platform. It's the same thing here. A lot of times you have the ability to prepare for the shot before the deer actually shows up and you actually make visual contact. So I mean that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you guys have any additional questions on 
the equipment. Um, I did have a video on the fourth arrow mods that I did for the shoulder and base, and actually I've modified it even since that video. I removed the middle plate entirely. I moved the bottom plate up to where the middle plate used to be, and I sawed off all the remaining aluminum, made that thing even lighter yet and use some JB Weld to really lock all the components together. I'm never gonna take the shoulder apart from the base, so this just makes it a lot easier for me. And then this uh, custom arm that I made, it's basically one inch by one and a half inch by 16th wall aluminum extrusion, rectangular extrusion. And I have a half inch diameter 13 thread aluminum uh, threaded rod going through the connection here. I have aluminum spacers with a, a bushing in between the two of them and it's a, a Rulon J material. And then I have the aluminum threaded nuts on the top and bottom. Then I have the fourth arrow fluid head here. And then I still have that same boat buckle strap for that fourth arrow arm. The only difference is now I actually, instead of having to thread the strap through all the way each time, I just sewed on a, a flat buckle so that I can take that uh, boat buckle latch and just hook it over that flat webbing strap. And then I also have a video on this utility strap, which kind of shows how I set up everything with not only the camera, but also the clock, the bow hanger, the pack hanger, and the grunt tube on the retractable lanyard. I sat up in that new tree about 60 yards from where I sat this morning and just saw that one buck and doe. What went on? I'm only sitting up on my stand about six feet off the ground. I didn't follow the blood trail anyways, but along the edge of this bedding area, there's a, a faint trail and there's a big scrape on the other side of one of these trees that I couldn't see before. There's also a, you know, a real big rub and you know, I just, Stumbled on this spot, you know, I've hunted here before and there's just, you know, doe bedding area. I figured maybe I'd give it a shot. And it turns out I picked the right spot, I guess. Look at him, here he is, right here. No, he didn't. I had him far back, but luckily he was, he was corbing away. <laughs> 